طيب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. Uh, let me introduce myself, uh, Abdul Rahman Hijazi with the head cover. So not only sisters put cover, also men uh, in, in this place. So uh, inshallah today uh, the plan is to go to, uh, on a trip uh, and uh, we will be wa walking around the masjid. Uh, I, I want you to just imagine the, pic the, the, uh, the map here inshallah. So as you know, um, Medina is the is uh, north of Mecca, right? So when we pray, the Qibla is south, right? So where is Qibla now? Anyone knows? Qibla is this way. So we're, this is south, right? This is north, this is south. So I want you to uh, uh, imagine now that uh, the north of Medina is the mountain of Uhud. So Uhud is this direction, okay? And this, this direction is the, the, um, the south, which is Mecca, okay? So, and the Haram is, uh, is, is actually the, the square that we will see and we will be at the uh, southeast angle of it. So what we will be doing is we will be walking on the east side of the Haram and then the north side of the Haram, right? So, so imagine that the Haram is, is, is this way. So we will go um, on the east side all the way to the end. And then we will be walking to the, uh, on the north side all the way to the west of it. Okay. So our trip starts from here and ends at Al Baqiya. Al Baqiya is the cemetery where more than uh, 10,000 Sahabi are buried. We're buried in, in that Baqiya, inshallah. So, so the, what we will be seeing, inshallah, first is that um, um, as we walk, inshallah, on our left hand side will be the Haram. And then on our right hand side, we will be first seeing a place called Saqifat Bani Sa'idah. Saqifat Bani Sa'idah was the place where, uh, when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, passed away, uh, the Sahaba went there to determine who the next Khalifa is. Inshallah, I'll be talking about the stories there, Inshallah. Um, and then we will be moving forward. And then, uh, of course, the Haram will be on our left hand side. And then we will be walking all the way to the end. On our right hand side, so now we are at the corner which is the northeast. Uh, at the right, at that place, we will be seeing a masjid called Masjid Al Ghamama. Masjid Al Ghamama is the masjid, uh, is the place where he saw uh, Salam prayed Salat Al Eid, led Salat Al Eid in a very uh, flat area, and while he saw Salam was giving Salat Al Eid, it was hot, and Subhanallah, Allah has brought a cloud. That, that provided shade to Prophet Muhammad uh, And it was very specific, like very, very special, subhanAllah. And so they, call, they, they called the, the whole land al Ghamama. And then the, after the death of Rasulullah by several years, they built that masjid called Masjid al Ghamama. And since then, the Khalifa, like Abu Bakr and Umar, each one will be doing Salat al-Eid in that place. So Umar used the place, uh, Abu Bakr used another place, Ali used another place. And in every one of those spots, they are very close. There is a small masjid. So there is Masjid al-Ghamama, there is Masjid Abu Bakr, there is Masjid Umar. Inshallah, we will see them from a distance. Are they being used now? No, they are not. Even Masjid Al-Ghamama, I don't know if, if, uh, if it is open. I heard it is under renovation, but we will be seeing it in front of us, inshallah. So maybe before, uh, so this is the place, it's called Saq Saqifat Bani Sa'idah, right? You see this, uh, where they have the sign. So what they are doing is they are doing some renovation and uh, they want to change this now into uh, a garden. In the time of Rasulullah this place was full of palm trees. So this was a garden and it belonged to uh, a family called Banu Sa'idah. So Banu Sa'idah was the family who owned this land and it was a full of palm trees. Uh, Saqifa means uh, um, a roof that uh, provides uh, shade. 
Uh, and um, at that time, the Sahaba or the people used to go to this uh, uh, spring or, or uh, palm tree place, and they used to sit together uh, to do any conference, any uh, meeting, because now they have the shade of the um, uh, of, of uh, that was provided to them, and uh, it's it's called Saqifa, which is the roof shed that they have. Um, and, and that is what happened when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu passed away. Some people were uh, very busy with, uh, uh, you know, serving Rasulullah Sallallahu as a dead person, including Umar uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Umar ibn al-Khattab. And then, um, and then what happened was that the Muhajireen went together, Muhajireen, those who came from Mecca, they went together on, on one place and the Ansar, went to another place. Ansar went to this one. You know, Ansar is, of, uh, is comprised of two tribes. Anyone remembers them? That Al-Aws and Al-Khazraj. This place was, belonged to Al-Khazraj. And uh, they, they, uh, but, but everyone came there. So anyone remembers the leader of Al-Khazraj? His name was, was what? Huh? Was it Sa'ad? Sa'ad ibn? So the leader of Al-Khazraj was Sa'ad ibn Ubadah. Sa'ad ibn Ubadah was the name of the leader of Al-Khazraj. And he, along with all the Ansar, were sitting under the shade of the palm trees and they were discussing what should they do after the death of Rasulullah Sallallahu So, and the, the Muhajireen were on another place, those who came from, uh, from Mecca, and uh, some others, family members, especially Ali ibn Abi Talib, was busy with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, you know, um, all, all the family-related issues. So what happened was that, subhanAllah, the, uh, the Ansar, uh, they, they were discussing who should, what should we do as a leadership, since uh, we, we are already missed Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then they have uh, chosen Sa'ad ibn Ubada to become the lead meaning that they wanted him to become the Khalifa. On the other side, when the uh, Muhajireen were uh, meeting, uh, someone came to the Muhajireen and told Abu Bakr and Umar and the, uh, the, the remaining Muhajireen they, uh, that the Ansar has already met there and they made a decision. So why don't you go together and talk to them? Because they want to have a unified um, decision. So Abu Bakr, Umar and, and Abu Ubaid Amr ibn al-Jarrah and others all left and went to the, this place and they met all together. At that point in time, subhanAllah, shaitan came in order to ruin the th things and say, okay, is it going to be Ansar or Muhajireen? Let's, let's uh, bring animosity between them. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them and protected them. And Sa'd ibn Ubadah himself, the, the one who was chosen as the lead by the Ansar, he was the first one to say, um, I want Abu Bakr al-Siddiq to be the, uh, the lead and the Khalifa after Rasulullah sallallahu It was a proposal that was made by Umar ibn al-Khattab, especially that uh, the, the reasoning behind all of this is that before he sallallahu passed away, when he was on his uh, deathbed, he asked Abu Bakr to lead the prayer. So, uh, um, so for, because he asked Abu Bakr to lead the prayer, Sa'ad ibn Ubadah radiallahu anhu said, if he wanted, if he, Prophet Muhammad, wanted Abu Bakr to be the lead of the prayer, why should we even ask or bother to ask to be the leaders after Rasulullah sallallahu He sallallahu already made his choice because the one who leads the prayer is the one who should lead as a Khalifa. So, and that's where Umar ibn al-Khattab uh, made, uh, pro uh, the, 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 he said, okay, then let us make bay'ah, meaning to give the covenant to uh, Abu Bakr. And he started, he was the first one to give him the covenant. And Sa'ad ibn Ubadah radiallahu anhu was the second one. And then everyone was like that. And then he radiallahu anhu was announced the Khalifa of the Muslimin, of the believers. So that all of this happened in this place. Okay. Uh, they, they destroyed the palm trees and now they want to get it back. Inshallah. Let's walk, inshallah. Ancient one, the, the old one there, this is what we call it Al-Ghamama. So this whole land was flat. And he saw Salam used to make Salat al-Eid, the Eid prayer or lead Eid prayer over there. So, so he saw Salam made the, the, he led the prayer over there. 
and uh, and subhanallah it he never saw salam prayed before or after salat al janazah for someone who was absent <clears throat> so by the way uh, nowadays when we pr when we have a uh, when we hear about someone who passed away in a different place in a different country do we pray salat al janazah on them do we anyone knows Okay, the ulama have difference of opinion, but the most sound opinion says that the only time you pray Salat al-Janazah on one who is not present in, fr in front of you is if at their place no one, has, uh, no one else has a prayed Salat al-Janazah on them. So f say for example, someone has, uh, you know, was in the, sh in the sea or in the ocean and then, you know, they, 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 he passed away, for example. And, and no one was there to make Salat al-Janazah on them. For that person, we can do Salat al-Janazah on the absentee. Similarly, if, uh, if, if uh, you know, a person passes away in a, in a place where there are no Muslims and he, uh, no one was able to take care of him there, then the Muslims if, uh, in a different place, they can do Salat al-Janazah on that person. Okay, clear inshallah. So let's go get closer. By the way, you see the you see that uh, small mosque? You see that one? The the, the minaret there? Uh, and and ha it has a dome and a minaret. So there were about seven masajid like this in the past. When I was a child, I came here and I actually entered all of them. There were seven of them. Uh, I think now uh, the, the only one that remained is this one here. And I, I think there's a, a, a second one. One of them belongs to Abu Bakr and the second one belongs to uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Why do they have them? Those were not most of, at the time of the Sahaba. But what, what, what happened is that the whole land was the land for what? For Salat al-Eid. It was flat and it was huge. So when he saw Salam made, led the prayer and on, of his Eid, he was exactly where that uh, uh, ancient masjid, you see those uh, domes there, uh, the white ones. When Abu Bakr became the Khalifa, he led the Eid prayer in the same land, but he was there. He was positioned on that one. See where that uh, minaret and uh, along with one dome. Similarly, there, there's a, th a third one for Umar ibn al-Khattab. It was just to, um, uh, I mean, all of these were built about 100 years after the death of Rasulullah Abu Bakr and Umar. And they were built just so that we, people remember them. And they gave them the name of the Sahaba. How, were they meant for prayer, to establish prayer? Um, yes, they used to pray in them, but really, I mean, there was no necessity to build like multiple masajid all in the same place. And that's perhaps, Wallahu alam, the reason that now they are no more used, being in use. But let's just walk closer to that Masjid al-Ghamama and then we will be heading the other direction. The, the hotel, uh, you, you see that um, some of these windows have a, a, something that is getting uh, coming out of it. Not a balcony, but uh, is, and it is uh, in dark, in dark brown, or uh, you can see it. You cannot see it. This building, Habibi. This, <laughs> this building. So this is. You see, you see that the 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 thing that is coming out. This is called Mashrabiya. Monks of Gamama, right? Abu Bakr. This is Abu Bakr. This is Al Gamama. Yeah. And Ali. Oh, Ali. Huh? Omar. Oh no, Prophet Muhammad there. <laughs> the masjid is there. Where is So okay. So. Had al Ghamama. Yeah. So 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 there are there are. The, the, this one is Ali. This one is uh, Abu Bakr. And uh, next to al Ghamama from that side there is Umar ibn al-Khattab, but it is closed. And next to those buildings, there is one for Uthman and there's one for Bilal ibn uh, Abi Rabah, Bilal al-Habashi. So, so the two masajid there, one masjid there, and then uh, Abu Bakr and Ali. No, he has his own masjid. Yeah. I thought every masjid here is the Well, but not the one for Bilal. Yeah. He was the Mu'adhan. <laughs> You, you know what you're seeing here <coughs> is um, 
Yeah, that that's actually the the the, the rawda of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So so when when you are standing like this, yeah, uh, that that's actually not that's the place where the men will go and make the salam on Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So so this this is the side where women cannot go. Women is are actually here. So this this side here, um, I mean, just imagine. Qibla is this direction, okay? Uh, let's, let's assume we are in this masjid now. So Qibla is this direction, <clears throat> and this from here all the way to the end, and then it goes back, is the house of Rasulullah They call it Al-Hujurat. There are five rooms in the house of Rasulullah Now, uh, the Rawda is actually from here all the way to uh, the member of Rasulullah and and the sisters uh, can sit in the rawda and they see the other side of the house of rasulullah so this side is the one facing the qibla that side that you see is the one that is uh, um, you know uh, the the other direction now uh, one one important thing here is this this place is where the grave of rasulullah was here and then there's abu Bakr next and then Umar. And as you imagine, the Qibla is this side, and the, you see the carpet like this, so people are praying this way. And the, the way that the grave is, is being put is that uh, uh, Rasul Sallallahu of course, was laid on his right-hand side. So his body was facing the Qibla, so as, like this, right? So that, that's where his grave, like this. And then next to him, uh, starting from the middle, but behind Rasulullah was the grave of Abu Bakr. And then next to him, starting from the middle of Abu Bakr and extending to the, this side is the grave of Umar ibn Khattab. That's why the, the distance is very close, by the way. Very close. It's because the, the grave of Rasulullah is like this, and then Abu Bakr is like this, and then Umar is like this. You see the point? Huh? Okay, so... So when, when, when you look through these, you know what you will see? You will see, you will see only another wall. So you, you don't really see the grave of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's unlike when, when you go to any, any cemetery. And the reason for this is because this whole thing was not part of the masjid in the, in the old time. It was only, it only became a part of the masjid during the Umawi, Khilafa. And when it became part of the masjid, uh, it was only because of the extension, because they were extending this side and not this side. So they decided that there was no room to go on the other side, so they, they wanted to, to extend this way. And that's where the house, they had to include it in the, in the masjid. They didn't really want to do it um, uh, on purpose. Now, if you, if you see the green dome of the masjid, do you know the green dome? Of course, the Masjid of Medina is well known for that one dome. Uh, here, you see this? This is a green dome there. You see that? That green dome is on top of this. Here. On the, on, so, so if when you see it, it, it actually was put or built on top of the grave of Rasulullah But it, it is not only his grave, it's the, the whole room in which Rasulullah was buried. Now, someone could ask, why was he وسلم, buried in his house? Anyone knows? If you know, uh, you, you, uh, Jibran will give you a prize, inshallah. Where's Jibran? Yeah, Jibran, you have a big prize? So, if you know why he وسلم, was buried in his house, you have a prize by Jibran. No. What, what, I mean, he could have been uh, uh, buried in the Baqir. You see, Baqir is, is a cemetery just next to the masjid. Why, why he saw Salam was buried in his own house? It was not a request by him, but you are close. There's a hadith, there's one hadith. Anyone knows that hadith? 
So the, the hadith says, and the hadith was said, was uh, narrated by the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They said that we heard Rasulullah sallallahu saying that not a single prophet in the past has passed away except that his grave was in the same exact place where he, Allah took his soul. So he, the, the, the very place, the, the very deathbed of him وسلم, was his grave, was exactly his grave. So he passed away on his deathbed. They removed that, death, the, the, that bed, they dig deep, uh, dig in the, the, the grave and they buried him there. So that's, that's why he وسلم, was buried in his own house. When he وسلم, passed away, uh, the house belonged to whom? Aisha radiallahu anha. So Aisha was preparing herself to be buried next to her husband. But uh, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anha was her father. So when he passed away, they buried Abu Bakr next to Rasulullah sallallahu for how much they know the relationship between them. So they, they buried him next to Rasulullah sallallahu what happened was that Umar radiallahu anhu was the, the, the one who was also very much connected to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wanted to be also as close to Abu Bakr and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as, as, as they are. But he does not belong to this house. He is foreign man to Aisha radiallahu anha. So Umar radiallahu anhu, while he was Khalifa, he sent someone to Aisha seeking her permission that when he passes away that she will let him buried next to Abu Bakr and Rasulullah Sallallahu Aisha radiallahu anha said that I was really hoping that this will be my spot but I would prefer Umar to, to have uh, to be there over myself. Subhanallah when Umar ibn al-Khattab passed away and you know how he passed away someone stabbed him someone who was a, 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 a fire worshipper stabbed Umar ibn al-Khattab. His name was Abu Lu'lu'a al-Majusi. He stabbed him uh, anhu, while he was leading Salat al-Fajr in the masjid, in this masjid. So he stabbed him and then he passed away. Before, before he passed away, but after he was stabbed, he asked his son, he said, after I die, you go to Aisha and ask her for permission again. He said, we already got her permission. He said, she, she gave uh, her permission while I was Khalifa. Now I am no more the Khalifa. I want to seek her permission after I, uh, I am no more a Khalifa. And once after his, he passed away, they asked Aisha and she said, I already gave my promise, this spot is for him. And they buried him radiallahu anhu, uh, just next to Abu Bakr. And that's why Aisha is not buried here. Aisha is buried in the, um, in the cemetery of Al-Baqi'ah. We call it Jannat Al-Baqi'ah or Baqi'ah Al-Gharqad. It's called Baqi'ah. Baqi'ah is the place where the cemetery. Over 10,000 Sahabi is buried in that. Inshallah, we will be walking th there, but sisters cannot get inside. They, you can see it from outside, you can see it from a distance. Now, the, the thing here is that um, as, the, uh, as, the, uh, as they buried Umar ibn al-Khattab, Aisha then, uh, when she passed away, they buried her in Baqi' al-Gharqad, and her, her uh, grave is actually isolated from the other graves. Uh, it is clearly identified, subhanAllah, there. Today, I went with one of the brothers. We went through, through that Baqi uh, al-Gharqad uh, and I showed him the uh, grave of Aisha radiallahu anha. Let's walk, inshallah. Yes? Isn't there enough room for Aisha as well to be buried with them? With them? No, but he is a, a foreign to her. That's why they... Well, it's, they are dead, right? Correct, but uh, in, in, um, they, they were buried like family. They were buried very, very close. And they could have uh, buried her in a different room. Yes, that, that was a possibility. But then uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, when she passed away, Baqi' al-Gharqad already has many Sahaba there. So they decided to just bury everyone there. Yeah, because they did not want to change the house of Rasulullah to become a graveyard. They were not supposed to write names and to write uh, dua or write uh, the, the, the dates uh, where, when they lived and uh, exaggerate and mashallah how great they were. All of these are against the sunnah. 
In fact, some ulama said it is not permissible to write anything on the grave. So what we do in America, unfortunately, is wrong. The maximum someone can do is to just identify a simple name and that's it. But other than that, everything else that would be written on the grave is not permissible. So, so and the, all of these, actually, the only thing that they have is that is, uh, is just a, a brick to identify where the head is. That's all. You see nothing except that. In, in Baqir al gharqa they don't. In the recent cemeteries, the way they do it is that they are rows and columns, and they just number the rows and the columns. So for example, if, if, if I have a relative who was buried, I would say, okay, he was buried in row number 15 and column number 11. So I, I know it this way, but no names at all whatsoever. Okay, so this is the Baqir al gharqa and as you can uh, imagine, uh, he, here is the uh, um, he, here is the place for um, the uh, the house of Rasulullah Sallallahu And uh, oh, I'm sorry, here <laughs> I was like, where is the dome? So here is the house of Rasulullah Sallallahu under this dome, and the the Imam actually goes from here, uh, who leads the prayer. No. Are we including these? No. Or just the biggest just ones. Just the, the long ones. By the way, each one of these is about 50 meters uh, high. Except this one. This one is the oldest minaret. This one, see? The one that is just next to us here, next to the dome. This one is the oldest minaret. And then there's. So are those counting as well? Yes, yes. Those are all counted as well? The, the tall ones, the very tall ones. Very tall ones? Yeah. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four. <laughs> oh, there's gonna be a lot then. That's like no. There are actually absolute number ten. That's why I've been saying. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I didn't hear you. You see the bricks there? Mm -hmm. Oh, this these are the graves of the Sahaba. Ten thousand Sahabi are buried here. <laughs> Yeah. So as you can see, as you can see, all the graves are identical, right? The only thing that you see on the grave is this brick, and that brick is uh, is to identify uh, the the place of the grave at the uh, especially at the head place, so that no one would would walk on top of it. And as as you can tell, if you compare this to the cemeteries that we have in America, Salaam alaikum. Uh, there are no names. There are no, nothing written there, right? Actually, it is not permissible to write things on the graves. People, unfortunately, in, 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 in America, they, they type the name, the history, they do the, 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 the years and the age, and they, they would mention something about how great the person was and whatnot. Nothing is actually on the graves uh, in the Sunnah of Rasulullah So the only thing is just to um, identify that this is a grave. You can always know wh which one you, you want by counting the, the rows and the columns. So the way they identify uh, what, what uh, grave belongs to what person is that they, they, they go columns and uh, rows. And then they say, for example, column number five and row number 17 is uh, so and so. Now, can you, can you, you can see that they are all uh, like this, the lines are, are, like, are like this. Just, just, uh, just watch here. Where's the Qibla? Who knows where the Qibla is? Exactly, the Qibla is this way. So all these are laid down like this, and they are facing with their chest, with their face to the Qibla direction. Now, do you see the mountain there? Anyone tells me who, what this is? This is Uhud, exactly. So Uhud is north of Medina, and Medina is north of Mecca. Yeah. They don't want us to stop, so let, keep, keep moving, inshallah.
سيدي كم عدد القبور هنا يا سيدي؟ لا لا حوالي فوق العشر آلاف So I think I think one one important thing to remember as we walk here is that if one day we will be there, right? And uh, Subhanallah, everything that we have uh, spent our time being very interested in or being so engaged with in this dunya, will we will just leave that behind us. And uh, at that point in time, you will not carry your iPhone or your Android with you. Yes. So for the stone, is it one signifying the head? Is that or one signifying the head? Is that? Yeah. So the minimum is to identify the head, but some uh, if you identify the the feet, it's, it's fine as well. Okay. Yeah, that 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 uh, I, I don't know. It's it's a mystery, by the way. Huh? It's a mystery. A mystery? Yeah, because I I mean, if you think about it, I I I used to know Zamzam before when it was actually um, available for people to go and grab the water from the well. From the well itself, yeah. Uh, so at that time, uh, I mean, you you can you can tell that uh, it's it's not as big as uh, as what we see now in terms of uh, production. So Allah alam. This must be a young, a young uh, baby. Yeah. So this is like regular people. Huh? These are just like regular Muslims. They're not like Sahabis. So. Th they don't have a they don't have a, a line that uh, distinguishes between Sahaba or not, but the ones that are just close to the masjid are the Sahaba. So uh, we don't know where exactly it it ends. I'm sorry. I said I didn't hear none of the lecture. I didn't, I didn't hear what you was talking about just now. I was uh, I was too too in front of you. Oh, I see. I see. So were to pass in here, would they bury you? When the, no, so so you so there there are multiple there are multiple. Uh, 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 can we go to the right so that people can uh, pass us, inshallah? Assalamu uh, alaikum. Allah. So there are there are multiple graves, uh, graveyards in in Mecca, and I think they have a, a criteria of who should be buried here and who should not. Now, just be be aware that the the graves of the Sahaba and the pious predecessors are n never touched. But the graves, the recent graves that they do for people like us, uh, are actually in the on those sides on there, and they they reuse the same grave every ten years. Uh, yeah, they 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 push the bones to the side and then they bury the new one, and they they can do that every ten years in a period of ten years. Yeah. Assalamu so alaikum. شباب من أمريكا يسلمونا الله يرضى عليك يا رب. Yes, because it was expanding from the masjid all the way up. Yeah. So you said they move the bones every ten years. Is that like? Only for those. There's a section for the 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 new ones, and that that's the one that they reuse. I don't know. I was gonna ask that. 
I don't know if it is illegal in America. I think they have a, a, a number of years that they, they, they can be used. I mean, many, many of the houses in Maryland, they used to be graves in the past. And then they, yeah. Oh, Alam, all these are Sahaba. That, that side there. So are these not Sahaba? I mean, most likely Sahaba as well. Sahaba and, and I'm sorry? Can men and women be next to each other? Oh, yeah. 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 Next to each other where? In the grave. You mean the, the being adjacent in their graves? Yes. So, so let me just show you here. So see, some of these are uh, a bit special. Okay. And here as well. Those are all Sahaba. Uh, Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it as 1,000 uh, amplified prayer and uh, we did uh, stay until uh, shuruq uh, and we prayed uh, the two rak'ah may Allah accept it as a umrah because that's the reward for it and then we said salam to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and then we went and visit this uh, uh, cemetery and you know that uh, uh, it, there's a a huge uh, reward for visiting the, uh, you know, the, uh, the the graves and and pondering about it. So Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm so glad, uh, so happy that we did, mashallah, this. And on top of all of that, we managed to talk to the police. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a very unique experience, to tell you the truth. If you like to hear about it, I can tell you now. <laughs> yeah, so let, let me just tell you what happened with that police uh, officer. So, so one of the things that we, um, we, we, can, we can send here. So one of the things that uh, they are trying to uh, control here is that they don't want people to make their own big gatherings. Because uh, sometimes those uh, people may abuse it and Nasamahallah uh, go on a very political uh, oriented um, you know fashion right so they are trying to get in control of these and and ask people not to have huge gatherings and uh, unless unless there's a an official permission so when we first started reciting quran we were a few and no one was uh, no one minds but when we started to get the uh, a, 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 in, in a bigger number, they observed us uh, and they said, okay, we, we just want to make sure that this is not uh, one of those things. <laughs> so they, alhamdulillah, they were so respectful. They came to me, they saw me that uh, leading the halqa, so they, they took me by the side, uh, what are you doing, brother? And I told them, we are reciting Surah Al-Mulk. They said, okay, that, that should be fine. We are just trying to limit the, uh, those huge gatherings in the masjid so that we don't have any uh, further issue. He took some information and then he was like, uh, you're, you're, you're good to go. And I said, okay, but you know what? You, um, pe people are now puzzled. <laughs> so, so I asked him, could you please go and say salam to them? And that's how he came, he and his friend, and he was like, Jazakumullah khair, may Allah accept you. And he wanted to express himself saying that uh, it was only because the huge number that we observed, uh, and that's why we came to just make sure that everything is okay. Um, but he could not make it except um, through those few Arabic words that he mentioned. There is the mountain of Uhud, that one. How, how, كم عرضه لشيخ الله؟ جبل أحد إيه؟ جبل أحد كبير جدا. حوالي 12 كيلو؟ الممكن. نعم. Yeah. ممكن أكثر كمان. Uh, almost like a 12 mi a 12 kilometers uh, side to side, and uh, that that's almost like eight miles from side to side. لا لا أكبر من كذا شيخ. And and it, it actually goes كبيرة. all the way to the back, so you don't see it all from here.
And what you see there, you see that fence over there next to the masjid, there's a fence there. That is the fence of the cemetery where the uncle, the uncle of Rasulullah Sallallahu was buried. Who, which uncle? Anyone knows? That's the, uh, the master of all the murders, Hamza radiallahu anhu. So he was buried over there along with two of the Sahaba. So, and, and actually you, you only saw those uh, few people there. And um, uh, this little mountain is the, the one that we just talked to you about. That's what, so the Rasulullah was here, the Mushrikeen were from that side, and the Muslims uh, were supposed to be on that, on the top of the mountain, so that they will hit uh, the disbelievers of, uh, using their arrows. Unfortunately, what happened is that uh, at the time, at the early time, he saw Salam was victorious and they were about the, to finish the battle. The people on top of the mountain, they felt, okay, khalas, it's done, it's over. So they left the mountain. The Khalid and Walid and the, the opponents, they were on this side. So they, they managed to go around and, and be on top of the mountain and they were hitting Rasulullah and the people from, from, from the top of the mountain. And that's where the, the, they were defeated. Uh, but the, the way it started, everything was to the, to, 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 uh, was going in favor of Rasulullah until the Sahaba who were at, at the top of the mountain, uh, you know, did not follow the, the, uh, the commands of Rasulullah And that tells us, even if you were Sahabi, if you don't follow Rasulullah then you will be defeated. Even if you were Sahabi, let alone us. So what we will do now, we will just go close to the, uh, this uh, cemetery. We will say salam alaikum and we'll go back inshallah. Okay? Let's go. Uh, you see those, the, those uh, rocks there? Uh, you, you saw those bricks there? That's where uh, Hamza radiallahu anhu and uh, another Sahabi were buried. And perhaps there are some more Sahaba over there. You see the bricks uh, uh, down the, the other side? So, so the, among the people here is Hamza, the uncle of Rasulullah Sallallahu and among them is Mus'ab ibn Umayr. Mus'ab ibn Umayr was the first messenger that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has sent to Medina before he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated. And then the third one was Talha ibn Ubaidillah. So all of these were killed in the battle of Uhud and they were buried here. Yeah, so what do we say when we see the cemetery? We say, Assalamu Alaikum. That's what we say, inshallah. And by the way, because we are not going to the, uh, the grave, it's fine for the sisters to be here. The problem is for us to go there, that's where the sisters should not do it. Okay. So, uh, there are no ladies uh, in the Battle of Uhud uh, that were buried here. So, yeah. If the graves were just right here, why did they make this entire thing the compound? Why did they make this entire thing the compound? Oh, on this one. Okay. So, the last one, so they, uh, they ask is if the if the graveyard is so small, tiny, why why do we have this whole uh, the the fence uh, all the way far? And Allah Alam is just a uh, a matter of protection so that people will not get close and try to climb this and go there. Um, I don't know. It's a, we should ask them. <laughs> okay. Any any question? Yes, yes. Yes, this is the Jabal al -Rumad. This is the mountain where the, uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi asked some uh, 50 of the Sahaba to go and... No, no, no. This is Jabal Uhud. I know, this, but I mean, so it's not connected. No, no, no. This one is a standalone one. This is this is by itself. Uh, it was a valley. Uh, 